Dee Dee Gardner, the Academy Award winning producer for 12 Years a Slave, held the Hollywood Networking Breakfast audience captive here at the Raleigh Studios in Hollywood, California. I'm Michael Real, and this is RealUrbanNews.com. Now, some of your movies, I read a quote from Brad talking about uh, how some of your movies that were critically acclaimed but didn't do great at the box office, like Jesse James, which I know Brad really loved, um, and said that it'll find its place in time. And I found that really interesting because I think that is true of a lot of really good movies. Maybe they didn't do huge box office, but they hold up well over time. Have you guys had a conversation about that, like in, sort of in the rearview mirror when a movie didn't necessarily meet your expectations? You know, we talk about that all the time, actually, and he's, he's, um, it's one of the things I treasure about him. He, ha he has great faith in the shelf life of a film. He really doesn't, um, I mean, he recognizes that the sort of current metric system puts a lot of value on opening weekend, and obviously opening weekend is a reflection on what kind of business the movie's going to do, and that matters because of an investment. But beyond that, and in many respects, he feels like we, you know, he said to me one year, we didn't find Days of Heaven in 2001 in the movie theater. You know, we found them in our lives, in our living rooms, in our, you know, in someone's bedroom, who knows? And that's why we do this. So, um, he, he just, it's just a genuine uh, sort of DNA strain of his faith in film. It's the big black. What is it? What's that inner voice intelligence? Okay, I gotta go. How do I, uh, what I'm trying to do is to get them so I can help people when they come to me, how do I get them in the work? Because sometimes they don't want it. You know, sometimes it's the other things and they don't want to let go, so they're dating, they can't let go. So, well, you're the clinical side. <laughs> <laughs> Just made it. Dee Gardner shared a lot of wisdom and insight, obviously the Academy Award winning producer, of uh, 12 years of slave. What did you garner from her? That she's very easygoing. She's really down to earth. Oftentimes people think these producers and directors and actors are like so over the top and for some of them they are. But when we can meet people like her and be able to sit and have a conversation and she's willing to share her information. So many people in this town are not willing to share. They keep everything close to the vest and they think they can do it themselves and they live in this kind of like Hollywood silo. And for her to break down all of that and come and be with us early in the morning, right. look, I had to put on my good hair for this. And so we really appreciate her taking her time to come and share what she knows with us so we can be better. Talk about the transition from professional sports to Hollywood. Yeah. Well, the thing about that is the odds of that happening, <laughs> to be a professional athlete and then to be legitimate in the Hollywood scene, it's one in a million, but I, I feel that if you truly believe in what you're trying to do, and, and like Dee Dee talked about earlier, if you have passion for what you're doing, everything's going to manifest itself the way it's supposed to. Meaning, is it going to make a million dollars? Is it not going to make a million dollars? But it's something that's going to be fulfilling to you, and as long as you're doing things that are fulfilling to you, like the NFL was for me, and, sure. and now I'm trying to do some of this acting stuff, it's that's all that matters. It's all that matters. Another great Hollywood breakfast, networking breakfast. How important are these? Oh, well, I've been coming here for, oh gosh, probably 14 or 15 years. And I've booked jobs right out of this room. I've met some of my best friends, who are still some of my dearest friends from this room. And it's just, also it's about being of service. Sure. I'm a veteran actor, and I try to always help newer actors. and. You know, it's just synergy, and we're all all connected. I, in fact, I ran into an AD the other day that on a pilot that I was uh, was the DGA trainee 29 years ago wow. in Santa Fe, New Mexico, on my first film. 29 years ago, and we're still here working in Hollywood. Sandra, give us the history of the uh, Hollywood networking breakfast. Well, I started it in 1993, uh, so that's 20 years ago. We almost 21 on the Paramount Studios lot. And I remember when I first 
uh, came to LA, I would go to events. And I found a lot of people were standoffish and I like to observe. And I didn't like that because that's not how I was raised. I was raised to embrace everyone. And I thought I would do an event where I would embrace all cultures, all ethnicities, and give everybody a chance to realize the dream, you know, or, or further the dream. And so um, I said, okay, I'm going to go to a studio. And everybody laughed and said, a studio, come on, it's never been done. And I said, well, watch me, you know, I, I don't take no for an answer. So I went to Paramount Studios and um, came back with a deal. And we did it there for 12 years, then to the Beverly Hills Country Club, then to the Bella Arch Hotel, Beverly Hills Country Club, and then now at Raleigh Studios. Kaja, what's your personal experience with the Hollywood Networking Breakfast? Um, my personal experience, this is my first one that I've ever been to, um, and it's been super great. I loved the speaker. I, you know, everything she had to say. Uh, I think for me, the most important thing about these is like to not judge a book by its cover. Um, because even even like seeing Dee Dee Gardner, you know, I'm like, oh my God, she's untouchable. Like, but she was such a creative. She was she was like, I read everything. I, you know, I'm a cinephile. Like, I look at everything, and and to see like behind that mask, I'm like, that's me. I I am a cinephile. Like, cool. There are people, you know, behind this black box that I can relate to. What do you walk away with today after networking? and here in Dee Dee Gardner? Uh, thousands of business cards, <laughs> um, just from everybody. Uh, I think more a sense of community. In LA, it can get really lonely. Um, you're like working unilaterally, like you have your people and those are your people. Sure. Um, but to like branch out and have someone come up to you and say like, I love what you do, I want to help. And like, that feels great and it feels supportive, which is sometimes hard to find here. David, this breakfast has an international appeal. Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's very important uh, because it's a really good way of networking. I mean, you are what your contacts are. No contacts, a career. And from Spain? From a little village, 3,000 people in the north of Spain. I arrived with nothing and I made my way into Hollywood. And you have a movie premiering? Yeah, on Friday, with Dean Cain as the main character and I play the bad guy, as usual. And so the international networking is essential to be successful. I mean, it's, it's vital. No international networking, forget about movies. I mean, it's not going to happen. You need to be good, you need to be talented, but you need networking. No networking, there's no, no movies, no contacts, no directors, who's going to know you? Unless you are famous already, but in my case, in my family, there are not famous people, and I'm not dating anyone famous, I'm a simple guy. Dr. Money, tell us about the entertainment project that you were working on for veterans. Sure, be happy to. Uh, so I'm a military veteran medical doctor myself and have been healing and treating our veterans in various capacities using a holistic approach, a mind-body-spirit approach. And we've been finding that it's very effective in getting them back into their home environment and work environment in a very healed capacity. So as a result of that, we found that there's a lot of great content in terms of being able to use this for a screenplay and a treatment uh, for literally a treatment in the, in the entertainment world sure. and now we've formed a, a dramedy around healing veterans and empowering them back into into life uh, so it's 21st century mash meets scrubs and it's a TV series and a feature film that we're working on comedy gives us a, a lot of relief mm -hmm. and I, I imagine those of you who are who have been in wars mm -hmm. comedy also gives you all relief mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. Is it a source of treatment? Oh, I, I, in fact, I would completely agree. There has been grave issues we've been dealing with the military veteran world. Um, just to give you an, an example of what some of the biggest highlighted issues right now, every day, 22 veterans a day are killing themselves. That translates to 8,000 veterans a year killing themselves. When you have that compared to how many we've lost in battle, which is about five to 6,000 in 10 years, every year we're losing 8,000 plus in suicide. That's all the only ones that we know of. So we've got to find a way to actually help heal our veteran population that's not only mind, body, and spirit. And humor and comedy seem to be one of the most therapeutic tools in getting the mind elevated into looking at possibilities for themselves. And I can't tell you there's how valuable the dramatic arts, entertainment, and especially the use of comedy has been hugely helpful for our veteran population. Now there's even a, 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 a treatment that we call laughter yoga. Hmm that is actually installing laughter therapy as part of the treatment process.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.